Okay. Hello, welcome back to Los Angeles Academy of Art. Today we're continuing our Western portrait with the mysterious cowgirl hat. Uh, if you didn't see the last one, you want to go ahead and back and check out the block in where we put this in. And you can see now that it's dry. You can tell because this is much, much lighter now than it looked when we blocked it in. When it's wet, it's got that glistening and the light is absorbed by the, the wetness. And then once it dries, it's a lot lighter. It just looks really light. But if you watch, let's do a patch over here. Look at how rich that becomes and how much richer that is. Sometimes um, I'll go ahead and take some uh, Gamasol, that's what I use to dissolve my paints and just kind of rub it on my painting so I can get an idea of how deep I wanted my shadows to go. But in this case, um, I don't really mind because definitely it's going to be dark, 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 dark. So we're going to go ahead and get started and I'm going to start with the shadows this time um, because there's a lot of them compared to the amount of skin tone we have. And I've set it up here so that you can see what I'm working with and you can see what I'm making. Here is a uh, Windsor Newton olive green. This is the only olive green like it, so make sure you're using Windsor Newton. And then this is my brand new, which I haven't used, Michael Harding Alizarin Crimson. I'm gonna mix those to try to make like a warm but nice looking black. Almost black, not completely black. Almost everything I make is gray. So everything that I wanna do is kinda gray, and I can really reserve this black. This is my ivory black for last, or I can combine it to make a black that's a little bit darker, but still has more richness than just, oh, it's black, black. Uh, most of the time before, I would stay away from even using ivory black. I, I almost never use it. I don't like to use black, black. I think it's better to mix a black. You can do many things to mix a black. You can take ultramarine and burnt sienna and mix the black. You can take ultramarine and burnt umber and mix a little bit of a cooler black. You can use Windsor Newton olive green with alizarin crimson. All of these make beautiful blacks. I usually add a tiny touch of white because I really just don't want to go too dark and I want to see what kind of black I've got. So you can see my black is very, very brown. I think that's cool, but I'm going to cool it down. I want a a cooler black. So I'm going to add some of this ultramarine, which I need to refill. I'll show you refilling later. I usually just stick the color on top, but in this case I might scrape it off first. Can you see, I hope, how that cooled my black down quite a bit. So now it looks more gray. That's what I want for my main black. And let's see, let's take it up a notch. Yeah, it's still a little brownish but it's got that coolness to it that makes it more gray. We can see that especially using this toned palette. The toned palette gives us a, a place to basically start from. So we can say, well, if this is middle gray and it's middle value, then that means that everything we, we create on here, we can relatively check re related to that. So I'm gonna use my um, palette knife Gently, don't do this to your nice brushes. I'm only doing this because this brush cost me like $2. Um, and I'm, I'm getting that excess out of my brush because I want to use it. And then, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually start filling in the areas where I'm gonna have almost complete darkness. Uh, I might, as I go along, I'm gonna dip this in a little gamsol. As I go along, I may add a little bit of lightness here, a little bit of darkness there. This is just to give it that variation. So this is going to be black. And we have, I remember in the last one, I wanted to make sure that we knew where her hair, you can't see it maybe very well, but her hair actually goes here. And so we wanted to make sure that we could see that differentiation from the background. And I'll paint under this clip at a later time. And the hair comes up this way. I'm always checking. I know you saw me with my block in, put up my paintbrush like so, and then bring it over. I'm still gonna do the same thing, even though I already have it in there. And it's just because I really wanna make sure that it's very, very careful. So I'm adding some depth here, because this is gonna be a high contrast area with her light, light blonde hair to the dark, dark background. So I'm gonna lighten it as I go around here. 
I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow ochre. Let me scrape this off. This is an old yellow ochre. Listen, I am very cheap and I'm not ashamed of it. So a lot of the time I'll just leave the paint there until I have to essentially, you know, start another bit of paint because I, I really just want to use as much as I possibly can. I might even add some of this yellow ochre to a little bit of sienna. This warms it up because I know that I'm going to have warmer shadows. And I might even add, let's see. So I'm looking over here to see that this area is where it's in shadow, where her hair is in shadow. And that area that her hair is in shadow is lined up with her eye. So now we know that this is where her hair is going to be in shadow. I'm going to put that in there. Just a little bit, nothing crazy. Because I'm indicating that there's hair here. It's a different color than my background, but it's really, really dark too, just like my background. So I want to differentiate those things right away so that I know what I'm doing. Now, remember that there are so many ways to start a painting and none of them are wrong. Some people start by putting in all their stuff first. So this is how I'm most likely going to do this, where I put in a bunch of lights, a bunch of darks, all for different areas. And then I work into those. Other people prefer tiling, which is where you put it down exactly as you're gonna see it uh, in advance. So look, I'm checking where's this dark shadow of her hair. It's lined up with the side of her cheek. So if we got the side of her cheek right and the lip, just relate everything together. So it's got the lip, side of her cheek, that means this shadow is in here. So I like to put it in there and work on it, however, if you like to get everything right at once, then take your time. Take your time, check where you're putting your items, and make sure that you're satisfied with the placement before you put it down. Now I'm checking this shadow here. I want to see how it relates to the curve of the lip. So it's about here, using my brush again, to here. So this area is going to be this shadow. And let's see how it goes under the chin. It's about here. I know I've said this before, but when I do it this way, where I'm putting in, you know, just a basic darks, basic lights, I want to make sure that I'm okay to paint over everything that I do. So I'm not too worried about precision because I can paint into it. My intention is to paint into it eventually. So I do recommend taking the time to think, how do I want to execute this? Will it be easier for me to do it where I do one at a time, one area at a time? Or will it be better for me to do it where I have paint on the canvas and I just get it on the canvas and I work into it? It's all personal preference and I will start certain paintings one way and certain paintings another. So now we can see that there's blonde hair here, blonde hair here, but it's very dark and it goes into the background darkness, blonde, blonde, blonde. Now I'll take some of my pile. It's a very dark pile. Let me get out some pile here. I'll wipe this off just a little bit. And get it. I'm not cleaning the brush, but I'm dipping it in there so that I can get some of that yellow out. And what I'm gonna do is say, okay, well, this is gonna be gray. This is all shadow. So I'm gonna put in that shadow. Pretty dark, a little more blue, because I want that to be, it looks brown here, and it kind of is, but I kind of want to differentiate it from our background, and I kind of like it cooler, so I'm going to put a little coolness, and since it's a shadow, I'll warm up my shadow, so my basic black is going to be a little on the cool side, so. We have that here, and it goes like so, I'm checking, checking, checking always, I dipped my paintbrush into Gamsol to kind of like just get it a little softer. There's some hair here now that I see that I didn't do and it cuts off right about here that I could add in there for sure. And this comes down. So like these you can see there's buttons. 
But because of the way that I'm doing this, where I like to paint into things as opposed to tiling, I'm gonna paint those last and uh, I'll paint them over what I have. This also helps you keep a consistent structure with your uh, work because you want to make sure that okay you know the structure is consistent underneath and then paint your buttons on top so some of that stuff's going to be just painting on top i'm following the shadow under the collar here right now so we've got the shadow under the collar it comes around Let's uh, look for the shape, because I see here distinctly a triangle coming up on this side. So maybe I'll make this a little more triangular and pull it in. Just keep it differentiated from the hair. And that looks pretty decent. That's kind of what I'm going for. Now I'm going to use this to lighten and add more of that coolness. Same pile though, so you can see one major thing is make sure you're always building enough. Always, always mix enough paint to use on the whole painting. So if this was a bigger canvas, I'd have a lot more paint right here. And the reason for that is that you want to make sure it's not about like being, I'm very stingy. I very much like to be, you know, cheap as possible. But I also know that um, if I run out of a color, Hmm, that's a little, that's maybe a little too blue for me. I'm going to warm it up a little bit with burnt sienna. It's a little bit too cool when I put it down, so I'm just going to warm that up a little bit. Uh, so when I mix a color, if I run out of that color, it's going to take me a while to mix it again. I have to match it. I have to make sure that it's right. All of these things go into this. And so I want to make sure that in the first place, I don't have to think about that. I don't want to have to remix my stuff later and think about, oh shoot, you know, oh, I can't get this color quite right. It takes so much more time, so much more time if you uh, have to remix than to just mix the color in the first place in huge quantity so that you don't uh, run out. There's this little light area here on the hat. And it comes up like so. Then we got this hat band, which is a bit reflective, so it's going to be lighter and it's going to have a little more of that warm yellow feel because it's reflecting the environment. And that's going to be like bright. I'm just checking, where is it relative to where I put the eyes? Well, I put the eyes here and there's a little bit of a hat brim and now there's the belt on top. So I'm always trying to see not just where is everything, but where is everything related to what I have now? Uh, the thing is, if you if you do get off a little bit, you're going to have to make sure that everything you put down is accurate. That's the hard part. So try to take your time and put all that in very accurately. A great way to check your accuracy is to either get up and walk way back far, far away from your canvas, and go check it from afar, because you'll be able to see the flaws more easily. Now I'm going to put in some of these darks with this hat here or take a picture on your cell phone. And then don't look at the actual picture, but look at the thumbnail of the picture. Because when you see a thumbnail, your eyes should recognize what it is. You're, you should, like if you see a small thumbnail of an apple, you know it's an apple. If you don't know it's an apple, that means there's something wrong with your drawing. And it's, it's kind of easier to figure out when it's so small. Again, I'm going to paint these um, silver buckles lit, like last, almost completely last, because I um, want the structure of the hat more than I care about those details. Everything's about making everything as simple as possible, and then I'm going to run this off into the background because it looks like that to me. Here, um, making everything as simple as possible, so you don't want to work on those details yet. You want everything to kind of go in there first. That way, if you do decide to stop, you can say it's a study. If you don't decide to stop, you can finish it. And then you, you don't have to worry so much. There's no pressure. Oh, I have to finish this because I, I put in the details in the eyes. Now I have to put in the details in the hair and the hat. You don't want that kind of pressure. Nobody does. It's not good. So if you get, if you keep it loose, but accurate, 
in the first place, you don't have to worry about that because you're not going to end up. Uh, if you have, if you keep it loose, you just say, "Oh, it's a you know, it's a quick study." This will probably be a quick study. That's just how it goes. These, uh, I think that it's very important to do a bunch of quick studies. It's almost more important than doing the big stuff. The big stuff will teach you a lot, but if you get one part wrong, the big stuff will hurt you a lot more. Whereas if you do a study and you get one part wrong, you can move on to the next one and just learn from your mistakes from that time. Okay, so some of this goes into the back. Now I'm kind of shaping this area here where there's a lot more like a, like a lot more interest, let's say, in the way that her hair flows backwards. And some of this is like really, because this is such a dark area, I'm kind of just kind of blending these edges into one another. I'm just trying to like, I don't want so sharp contrast because actually you don't see too much going on here. So I don't want you to see this and go, oh, look at that. Oh, it's so bright and dark and it's really in your face. A lot of what I think about too, which is later, maybe later, if you're newer to this, it's no problem. You don't have to think about this yet. But I want one place for people to look. I don't want many places. I want everything to sit back relative to my focal point. So there's a lot of examples of that uh, when I did my roses painting. So if you check out the roses painting, you'll be able to see some of the, uh, the way that that works. Um, where I made sure that everything besides that main rose was pushed to the back so that rose really pops. If you have multiple focal points, that's cool too. But make sure that you make one of them your main focal point because uh, when you look at a painting, you want people to see, okay, this is the most important part. So now I'm gonna go ahead and mix some of the lighter part of the hair um, and I'm gonna actually put some more yellow ochre on there. Here I am using Michael Harding Series 1 yellow ochre. I'm just gonna stick it on top of here because for me, I don't mind if it gets a little bit muddy. It's not like the biggest deal to me. If you care, please be very careful. Um, people with cleaner palettes and cleaner uh, paint piles have cleaner paintings, generally speaking. There are a ton of exceptions, but uh, if you ever want an example of that, look up Dave Chefavis. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his last name right, but it's C-H-E-F-E-V-I-T-Z, I believe. I could be a little bit wrong. Is it Chefavis, V-I-E-T-Z? Anyway, look him up. You'll probably find him. He is amazing, and his palette is so clean. So, so clean. Okay, so I actually have decided that I also want to do the skin tone at the same time. And that's because these are all very light, uh, light. So I'm going to wipe off this excess layer of my brush. And remember, always mix enough for your whole painting. If the uh, paint getting into the other areas bothers you, then don't do it. So see how I got a bunch of paint into my white and you can see some of that dark paint here? If that bothers you, please be careful about it. It doesn't bother me so much. I'm not careful. I don't really mind. It's okay to not paint exactly the same way. So everyone's going to have a different preference. Well, a little bit of blue because my shadow is going to be cool. Remember in the roses and in the bell pepper painting, I said that you want to make sure you never ever just use white on its own. When you mix white, you need to add a little bit. I'm going to actually add a little bit of pink in here. This is very goopy because we am white. Uh, you want to add a little bit of your light color. So if your light is cool, add a little bit of blue. If your light is warm, add a little bit of yellow, orange, red, that sort of thing. I'm really going all out because this is already pretty goopy, so I'm just gonna, you know, try to de-goop it and then just make a whole pile of this. For the skin tone, um, I usually start with my light color, which is of course white with a tiny bit of ultramarine because I'm gonna make the skin tones cool. 
Uh, and then I want to consider the contrast, so I don't want to go too dark with this. Even though this is like an overall kind of dark moody painting, if I keep it low key, it's not going to have that contrast that I like. And I usually use a little bit of burnt sienna. Sometimes that'll do. Sometimes the burnt sienna, there's two different types of burnt sienna. This is a burnt sienna that is opaque. It's like its own color. It actually makes really good skin tones. It's great for redheads. It's like the color of red hair. I am a redhead naturally, so I happen to know this. And also, if you come to my studio, you'll notice that a lot of my models end up wearing red hair as well. It's usually like a wig or whatever. Um, and then that's pretty cool. So I've painted a lot of red hair. Love red hair. And this, this kind of opaque burnt sienna works really well for it. So now we've got like, let's say a tan. Tan's not bad, but this girl's skin tone is a little bit more pinker. That is not correct grammar, but I'm gonna add some of this alizarin crimson to it to make it a little on the pinker side. And alizarin is a cool red. I have two reds on my palette. I have alizarin and I have cadmium. Uh, when I have a warm area, I use cadmium because it's a warm red. When I use a cool area, like the lights, I decided they're gonna be cool, right? I'm adding more alizarin. Then I wanna use alizarin because it's a very cool red. So, coming out a little more pink than I like, but I do need some of that depth of value, so I'm gonna leave it and add a little bit more burnt sienna. The other type of burnt sienna is the transparent kind, which is my preferred burnt sienna because I love to add it to the painting as an addition. I don't like to necessarily have it be, normally I'm not trying to put burnt sienna as its own color, I'm just sticking it in there to mix it with something. So. This one mixes a little better, let's see. And almost there, but I wanna cool it down a tiny bit, so I'm gonna take a little bit of this olive green. I'm gonna add it, see how that cooled it down, so darkened it slightly, so I can really push, push the highlights. It's getting a little darker than I want, but we will go ahead and work with that. And yes, mixing your paint takes this long, that's why I say mix it all at once, get it all done. Get it all in there. Don't remix this. If you have to have more of this, it's going to take you a while. So now I'm switching paintbrushes. And I'm going to go ahead and start putting in my skin tones. This is a very goopy wipe because it's been out for a while, maybe a week or two. So I'm going to um, have to add more, um, add more camisole to it. So the transparent burnt sienna is great for mixtures and that kind of thing as well. But it's less great for if you're trying to do a solid, like the hair that I was mentioning, you know, you would want to. Let's see. Okay, so the lighter areas are here. Again, I'm always trying to follow the model. I'm always trying to look back, compare. I may have put this in correctly. Sure, I might have. But it doesn't hurt to double check everything. I'm gonna get it kind of lighter and looser here so that I can see what's underneath. And then this lip is more like this. And I'm gonna add my, this, I might use um, alizarin here for the cheeks and the nose for the red band, but I may end up also adding a little bit of the cadmium liquid. This is the red band. This is the area that goes across the cheeks. I might even add a little bit more here. Right now. It goes across the cheeks, uh, across the nose. Let me just wipe some excess off here. I do want to mix this in, but I want to make sure it doesn't overpower. So one thing you'll find is as you go along, you'll figure out which paints overpower other. So this is my red band. This is the part that goes over the cheek and over the nose. It goes all the way across here. So you're gonna see it in the shadows as well. You're gonna see the red band here, you're gonna see it here, all the way across the nose like so. I like to emphasize it. I like to make it a little more exaggerated. 
It's probably one of my favorite things ever. And if you look at pretty much any of my paintings, I've exaggerated the red band. Um, it's just a thing that I like to do. And then I'm gonna find, see it's a little, it goes down a little here. There's a little bit more warmth here on the bottom of her cheek where she is wearing bronzer. Not to give any away any of her, um, you know, makeup secrets, but she's totally wearing bronzer. Ask me how I know. That is my twin sister. We are identical. I took this picture, she took this picture of herself many, 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 many years ago. Not that long ago. See, and now if I need to darken something, I can just go to my darks and use it instead of using like, let's say black or whatever, you know, I don't have to go to there. I can just use the dark that I created already. And then there's there's going to be some uh, hair here that I'm going to cut into. I want to see, make sure that this isn't really too hard. Just kind of darkening this area where it's under this lip, under the shadow. Also, this is going to go into the lip, so you can see I pulled it into the lip. If there's going to be another color there, but it, this also goes into the lips, so I want to make sure that I have it down. Lighten this area. And then another pro tip is that this red band should go down here to where you see this line here if you make that line you'll make the person look very old but instead you can just differentiate it by pulling your red band down here and then taking your non-red band color and cutting it off like here oops that's still red band color as you can see just cut it off here a little bit more lightness because this is a very bright area so now you can differentiate this part of the cheek from this part of the lip. And that will give you that more realistic tone. I'm gonna work on this red band a little bit more because it's a little bit too far this way. And you can see the red band and this, this lip thing cuts off here at her lip. So that's about where it's gonna go. It's almost right. I'm gonna add a little bit more here because this is going to be cut off by hair. And I know that. So that's what I'm doing. And then I'm going to go and put in some of this nose color here. This is a, still in the light, but it's almost a shadow. And then, of course, I need some more red because this is part of the red band. Whoops, that's a little too much red. See, I like to work into my um, painting. I don't like to just um, put it in exactly as I see it. It's kind of funner for me to just kind of work it. This is also kind of, uh, it's slightly shadowed, but it's, you know, I'm gonna get part of that, that red band over here. So this is still gonna be, this is a mid-tone shadow here. That's why I've darkened it so much. The whole thing, so you see the lights coming from here? This cheek cannot possibly be as bright as this cheek because the light is coming from here. The only exception, like it should be this area, but there's this highlight here. She's wearing highlighter along with the bronzer. <laughs> I hope she watches this so she knows I'm calling her out on her makeup skills. Um, very nice makeup skills, by the way. Uh, so what you, you want to make sure that, you know, you never have this cheek. This cheek looks like it's a, you know, it's not, it's not a shadow, so it must be light. But it's definitely, definitely not going to be on the same level of brightness as this cheek. So 
be very aware of that when you're painting this. And then there's a big highlight here where her uh, hair is reflecting onto her cheek, and that's a very orange, very sienna, very must, uh, very um, ochre, and it's pretty dark, but it's still there. I forgot to touch the skin here. So this goes like so. Again, I'm always checking. This might be a little too bright, but I'm going to pull it in there anyways. I actually see a little of this here too. A little bit around this area. A little more sienna. A little warmer than the yellow. And it goes here. This is just some like, we're basically we're adding some mid-tone here. Again, sometimes I just use my brush. To figure out those angles. I don't even put it in that way. Don't use, I don't have to go like this necessarily. So since I'm here and I know this cheek is too wide, I'm gonna go ahead and fix it right now. So I feel like that's gonna cause me some trouble later. Richard Schmidt said, never knowingly leave anything wrong on the canvas. So now I know it's wrong. I even talked about it earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and fix it now. This is where that goes in the shadow. And then there's that uh, mustardy color that we used here coming out. And then also the red band does cross the ears. So all the ear area, I like to, I like to exaggerate. I'm a big exaggerator. If you ever watch my videos long enough, you'll hear me say like a million and a thousand. I like to talk very dramatically. So I'm gonna put this exaggerated red in here and make sure it's at the right angle because that's a this is a very tough angle and very tough area to work on so make sure when you're doing especially the jawline I talked to many 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 artists and a lot of them say hey most of the time when I have a portrait and the person says this doesn't quite look like me many times it's just that the jawline is not aligned with the right part of the mouth or whatever so take your time make sure you look at that make sure you take the time to figure that out and then it goes into some of this blonde here and then the rest is kind of what we're working on now and some more of this dark blonde but from here so we're just like crossing whoops not blonde enough no big deal, we will just make it blonder. Now I'm gonna darken around that. Just rotate around your canvas. Don't don't be stuck in one area. You will end up just regretting what you do. It's gonna take you a long time to and then you'll be like, oh man, I overworked it. This stinks. So make sure you're not overworking, make sure you stay around just like keep moving around your canvas so that you can uh, not worry about it so i can't actually see her eye but what i can see is that the tilt of her nose is this the tilt of her mouth is this and the tilt of her jaw is this that means her eyes are also tilted like that so actually it should be up here a little bit more or both of them should be down so i would and all this, uh, see how dark it looks now? It'll dry a little lighter. That's why I don't really mind that it's like not the right color. And then she has this kind of all around. And I'm gonna start with this area I wanna get. Eyes, I tend to be okay with detailing quite a bit. So I'm switching to a smaller brush that has more ability to do the things I want it to do. And I'm gonna 
foot down, good. Good. So remember that the whites of eyes are never white, and again, we're gonna keep working into this. So that's why I don't really care that it's you know so bright. I don't mind that it's cut. It's gonna be cut off. The whites of eyes are never ever ever actually white. There's no exceptions really. So these are things I normally do closer to the end, but this is the only part of the eye that I can see really. So I want to make sure that I get this in and I get it in the way that I want it right now. Getting a little closer and make it easier. Again, remember angles. If this is the angle, the angle of the eye is tilted downwards. Don't want to make sure you don't want to just like, oh, it's straight or it's this close or that close or whatnot. You want to always make sure you keep consistency. So now I'm going to actually do some of the lips too because I, I need to get those in to get the relationship between the lip red and the red in the eyes, etc. So I'm going to put some of that in there. Oh, nope, I think I want it to be. So you see me wiping off my brush up here so that I can make this mixture the way that I want it. Yeah, that's fine. I cooled it down, but I also made it less of that cool um, eraser ring. And everything's at that angle. So if this is coming out straight and the other part's not straight, make sure to cut, make this the same angle. Make everything correct, relatively speaking. And I see a lot of this orange, red, orange, under here where there's like reflection so this area like inside it's it's almost reflecting inside of your mouth so if, if there's light coming in there it's going to be like really red and it's going to be really really bright and always very warm because your mouth is going to be a very warm area um, a lot of the areas that i call warm is going to be let's say your nostrils your mouth um what else let's see uh ears and stuff that anywhere on the red band is essentially also 